Hi, how are you? I would like to give you this warm welcome on this video of 2022 Camino de Santiago guide, which is the freshest and the most accurate of all our videos about what to do and what to prepare for Camino de Santiago. Accommodation, money, safety and security, food, and many other questions that you probably will need and, and you would like to know about Camino de Santiago, including the history, most common errors, and the spiritual part of the Camino experience will be included inside of this video. We took our experience as well as thousands of questions of fellow pilgrims in the YouTube uh, and the Facebook groups and gave you this compendium of knowledge that you can use and you can enjoy Camino de Santiago like you never did before. Get yourself a nice cup of coffee, something to write, and let's start! And from that moment onwards, we follow this same path from Oviedo to Santiago, which is known as Camino Primitivo, through 320 kilometers, around 12, 14 days of Camino. And there's few interesting things that you will love about this Camino, which is the nature. Unbelievable, undiscovered nature. This stage called Hospitales, which when the, um, the weather is beautiful, you can see amazing views of all over Asturias. And yeah, thousands of people went this way and till today, I would say this is one of the most unknown, but at the same time, most privileged nature-wise and the most beloved Camino for all the pilgrims all over the world. And the second, a really interesting Camino is Camino del Norte with 900, nearly 827 kilometers which starts from Bayonne or from Irún and it passes all over the coast. So you wake up in the morning and you run straight to the salty cold sea, you have the best bath of your life and then you follow walking in the stages of Camino del Norte. There are four different regions that Camino del Norte passes through, which is Basque Country, Cantabria, Asturias and Galicia. And this mixture of these four different regions with four different dialects, with four different cultures, with four different types of food makes it amazing. And I can tell you from this, the difference between the taste of the coffee in each of these regions amazing place is not really busy it's a bit more expensive than the other caminos because obviously it's not as popular there are not as many albergues and for example on the french one but nothing to worry plan yourself good and and you will you will do it perfectly fine unforgettable journey for two different countries with lots of history and different culture this is Camino Portugues, which is the second one as the most popular in 2021 as the result of 30% of pilgrims chosen to do that Camino. Food, amazing. Culture, magnificent. And the nature, it's still beautiful and undiscovered. The coastal part of Camino Portugues, it is, it is, in the heart of all the pilgrims forever. And now, in the ring, the one and only Camino Frances. The UNESCO World Heritage since many years. Millions, millions of people since 12th century have visited and have walked that path. And there is nothing more to say as thousands of books is saying that there is movies, hundreds of movies, even Charlie Sheen, The Way, fantastic movie, Paulo Coelho's book, it's all about this Camino. 
Imagine the atmosphere that you feel, then you walk the living legends. And you know what? Thousands of pilgrims cannot go wrong. 920 kilometers from Saint Jean Pierre de Port. You can start from any other place. Wherever you start, you will enjoy because Camino Frances is something special. And I happen to be that I'm going for Camino Frances since the 3rd of April. And then if you want to know more about it, if you know to, if you want to know how do I prepare and how is the experience about this Camino and, and the other one that we're gonna do this year and the next year as well, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Please give a like to this to this video and comment down below which is the Camino that you're trying to do. This little time of yours is well appreciated and can make a big difference because the community of people who talk and think about the same thing can grow and reach many more others. If you have a difficult decision between those four or five different Caminos, just to tell you there's more than 15 main Caminos de Santiago and each of these Caminos de Santiago you can start in any possible place. Normally, what people do, they start around 100, 120 kilometers from Santiago, which allows them to pick up all the necessary stamps to put them in the credential. And then once they get to Santiago, they can claim it in the Pilgrim's uh, office and they can get La Compostela, which is the certificate that you have finished Camino de Santiago. And now the main topic of this video for 2022 Camino de Santiago guide, which is how to prepare yourself for Camino de Santiago without any doubt is safety and security. We did Camino last year in 2021, which we did in July and August. And it was in the middle of the pandemic. There are a few different cases here and there, but we couldn't say this is something really typical. And in 2022, everyone or nearly everyone already got their vaccine. Nearly everyone is well aware of safety measures. And especially people who work in albergues, bars and restaurants, they obliged by the law. You can even not come to the France or to, or to uh, Portugal through the land if you don't have your full vaccination done. So just see the difference. And back then it was already safe and imagine how safe would it be now. Of course, the risk is always there. But if you do it the correct, a respectful way if you have your vaccines done if you don't mix too much with strangers if you only stay with places they follow the rule and the guidelines of the universe i think that you can do it a good and positive and safe experience camino de santiago it's mainly about nature and it's much difficult to get infected in the nature without anyone around than in the city center where you live Please, please don't let the fear guide you. Let the intelligence show you how to do it and then let the courage from your heart show you and move you from your place to the first stage of Camino de Santiago. So you have chosen the route you want to go. You have full vaccination done. So now what is the next step? And there is a plane passing just by and I have to wait until it passes by. Hmm. This is what happened guys when you live not far from the airport. I'm not complaining, not at all. So you have your vaccinations done. You know where to go. You know which route you want to pick. So now what's the next step? Should I employ the private company which could show me how to do it should i ask for the help for the tourist agencies or i can do it by myself and there is an option of doing it through the agency and it's a valid option because they will take care of absolutely everything your journey your accommodation your bag your food absolutely whatever you need they there to take care of you and on the other hand side i'm just thinking did the pilgrims 
from 12th century employed the tourist agencies. It shows me that maybe for the convenience side of it, we could take advantage of all the business around Camino de Santiago. But if you really want to live the experience of Camino de Santiago, which is made especially for pilgrims and for making it on your own, maybe you should leave the agencies on the site. Because on the end of the day, you're gonna walk Camino de Santiago and from the first day, everyone will tell you where to sleep, what to do, how to manage, there is information provided all the time on the average step of the way. There's a one little exception because maybe in July and August, because of the special year that we have, the San James year, um, they could be a bit more busy. So maybe think around, think about it, and you can call in advance to some of the places to book your spot. This is the only place that all the pilgrims will tell you to book or not to book in advance. And yes, it requires a lots of, a lots of courage. Because not having things planned, it's going out of the comfort zone, which are not really used to. Not having things under control, it sometimes can cause the anxiety and, and stress. But this is a mental thing. This is only the mental supposition which in reality does not exist. Because thousands and millions of people did it already like this and they manage. So try it on your own, be a bit brave and you will have the best experience of Camino de Santiago that you can imagine. So where should I sleep? There are three different forms. The first one, albergues. Special little places for pilgrims called albergues, um, which are the common places for many of pilgrims. You sleep together, you eat together, you laugh together, you play together. Amazing place. The second thing is the pensions, like the little small hotels and the last one, of course, the hotels itself. Each of these places has its proper advantages and disadvantages. The pros of staying in uh, albergues are definitely the atmosphere, the un united thing of all the pilgrims from all over the world that share the experience, they share the food, and they talk and laugh and play. But there is one little negative thing. If someone snores, nobody sleeps. <laughs> you sleep in the room with everyone in the bunk bed. So obviously, if you will snore, no, no one else will snore. So please take a little things and put it into your ears and they could save you a few nights of good sleep, which you will absolutely need. If you're not really into sharing your space, uh, take advantage of many different hotels and um, uh, little pensions, bread and breakfast, which are plenty on the way. And it's easy, really easy. All you have to do, you have to search into the internet of how to do it, which is doable for everyone. Yeah, okay. So I know where to sleep, I know what to do, and how should I find the way? It's even more easy because the way is all marked with the yellow arrows and with the shells. It works a bit of a, like a play, like a game for the kids. You just follow the arrows. And if you lose your way, don't worry because you can go maybe a kilometer, maybe even less. And if you not find the arrow, you will just come back. There is no big issue of losing the way in Camino de Santiago because mainly and nearly all of the Caminos are really, really well marked. So if you really need, you can get like an app. There is few of the apps that you can use. The Ninja Camino app. There is another one from, uh, from Gronze. There is another one from many other places. You can use the uh, Buen Camino application. So many of them and the, in all they can show you the proper and correct way. But maybe you would like to leave the phone in your pocket for some time 
and just to take it sometimes to make a nice and good picture. Think about it. Maybe the Camino de Santiago could be the moment for you to connect to yourself and connect to the nature and leave any other electronic devices unplugged, switched off or simply at home. And what about the money? How much money I have to take and how much money I have to spend? Normally, Camino de Santiago is not the holidays in Dubai. So everything depends on you guys. The amount of money you want to spend on Camino de Santiago depends on how much money you have. You can do it the most expensive way and you can spend 100, 200 euros a day as well as you can do it a low budget humble way. Staying in albergues will in general are private or public and those public ones as many of the privates are normally donation based. There is some albergues that have the uh, fixed, uh, fixed price on it but it's a really low price around 10-15 euros a night. So that of course could include as well some food because in albergues during the night and in the morning you have a collective breakfast and collective dinner which is really common in albergues and in the end of the day when you're gonna leave you will decide based on your your possibilities and your feelings how much money you want to give to them i remember that sometimes there is only one way how they sustain and how they survive so if you have give if you don't have do something for them and and just or at least leave the place as clean as possible in general you will need some extra money and cash but don't worry because the Camino is a safety place it's a really safe place there is even a special Camino police that go around and take care that there is no robberies there is no scams and there is no chances that you will lose your money and one more thing if you see any musician on the street as my father used to do give them maybe a little coin so we can support the music as a form of art because those guys they give all their life for music and and sometimes it's difficult to survive eh? so what is a typical day in Camino de Santiago typical day in Camino de Santiago starts from 5 to 8 o'clock this is the time that you probably will wake up and with or without the breakfast you will start to walk of course be ready if you start in the morning have a little light which will allow you to see clearly all the arrows and all the things on the way and define the way and then when it starts when it starts to brighten up maybe you can find a little place to have a nice cup of coffee with a nice tortilla sandwich or whichever you choose and that's what you do you simply walk and walk and walk and walk and then you see some pilgrims and if you feel like you chat if you don't you don't there is no pressure on connecting to people and there is no pressure on not connecting to people so you would walk and you would walk and you would walk and you would walk and you, and after some walking you will get to the point where you are it's interesting to know that the sooner you start the sooner you can get to the place and sometimes especially in the summer seasons you can avoid um, something which in latin is called la hora sexta which is the the highest point of the sun which from the word siesta came from have it in mind because depending on the month this could be a really predominant factor of your trip and then once you're in albergue once you're in your place you can see what's what's going on in the place you are you can go have a chat with people go to the bar have a nice beer have a nice wine spain absolutely lovely for wine and interact with people interact with yourself and then the dinner night prepare for the walk for the next day and that's what it is so lots of physical exercise good food good companion and the time for yourself as well 
one of the three most important things that you will need for your Camino are shoes, socks and backpack. The shoes, of course, knowing by the opinions of thousands of pilgrims, we came to the conclusion that they have to be comfortable, but at the same time, the durability has to be higher than common. There is one type of shoes that people like to choose, which is called the uh, trail runners, which have the sole a bit more um, hard. The cushion itself is a bit more accustomed to standing on the different types of surface. But whichever shoes you take, remember to use it before. There is nothing worse to take the brand new shoes on Camino and then in a few days you actually can have uh, problems with your feet, the different blisters and the different issues. So get yourself shoes before, use them. And the one thing, if you have problems with your uh, ankles, you always can get uh, mountain boots. But remember, the mountain boots, choose them really lightweight. Otherwise, you're going to burn your feet out. And of course, if we're talking about shoes, let's talk about socks, because socks happen to be the second most important thing. And mainly, they have to be well fitted to the feet as well. What happens is that sometimes when the sock is too loose, it actually can produce all types of sores. So there is a specialist sock called Hiking Sock and there are a few different companies, Smart Wool, uh, Darn True, which you could see online, you can order and you can check out if they are for you. And the materials that I made from, which mainly would be a merino wool. And that the merino wool is absolutely crazy because the merino wool happen to absorb uh, bad smells. We all been there, we all know what we're talking about. The bad smell of the hiking shoes is the worst thing ever. They can adjust the temperature inside, so when it's cold they actually uh, warm up your feet and when it's hot they can, they can make your feet a little bit cooler. Merino wool is the best invention ever. Thank you universe for making the merino ships. Honestly. And once you have your shoes, once you have your socks, then it's the time for the backpack. And this is totally new subject. The backpack is probably the most important after the shoes a part of your equipment. The backpack is your second skin. The backpack is what you will carry on you all the time. There's always the option to send it with the post and then there's no shame about it. And that doesn't make you less pilgrim than carrying the bag with you because the most important thing is to finish the way. But you can take the precautions and equip yourself first of all with a good backpack and second of all, not to stuff it with all unnecessary equipment. Last year, with all the equipment for recording, I had to send back home around five kilos. And I couldn't manage, so I had to send it back. So you only had one camera with me, but that was necessary. Have in mind that the backpack should not be more than 10% of your weight. It means that if you're 70 kilos, your backpack should be 7 kilos. That means that you have to become a minimalist. This is important that you fit your backpack to the correct size of your body because the most expensive backpacks have the proper sizing. The sizing which allows you to adjust especially the belt which takes around 60-70% uh, of all the weight of the backpack and puts it on the top of the, the hip crest and then another 30-40% I can, can easily relax on the shoulders. This is important. Important is there's also with the new modern backpacks you have this special airplace which doesn't allow your 
uh, your back to sweat. Normally when you will put the things inside of your backpack, you will procure to put the most heavy things as close as possible to you and obviously not in the bottom bottom part which you will feel with sleeping bag or maybe with the shoes but have it in mind otherwise you're gonna get out of balance and the walking would be really really difficult the more you take the more backpack the bigger backpack you have there's most chances you have that you will fill it up with unnecessary stuff so if you don't carry out with you the tent if you don't carry with you um any other mat yoga mat and anything else 30 40 liters should be more than enough osprey has beautiful backpacks uh, there is another german bag company called Dauta. and um, there are patagonias there is many of them choose yours but choose it carefully because it will save you for all your life and I just realized we have so many things which are still to be covered and one of the most important ones is clothes but I'm thinking that for the clothes I will do a special separate video which is 15 minutes of, of presentation so please follow in a few days or maybe in a few weeks I will make this little, uh, little link to the video about what I have in my backpack which I'm gonna take for the Camino Frances, 35 days, 920 kilometers I will do and I will show what is the equipment, what is the equipment for the uh, rain because it's gonna rain, yes or yes, what is the type of merino uh, clothes that I take with me and what are the special bags that take all the air from, from the clothes and make everything nice and compact. And now the last subject that seems mm, the most important for me, which is the spiritual part of Camino de Santiago. We're not talking about religion, because spirituality would be for everyone, doesn't matter where you're from and what you believe. And I think the pilgrimage is a universal possibility to reach within and to understand who you are and what you do in here. We all seek the one and only thing, happiness. And sometimes it's difficult to see this with the day-to-day -day life, with the day-to-day -day problems. So this Camino de Santiago could take you to a different dimension where you can see your existence from a different perspective and that angle can give you many answers. So remember, there is not only a touristic trip, there is not like a holiday that you can have, but if you pay attention if you, sometimes you stay silent, if sometimes you close your eyes and meditate or listen to the forest or just listen to yourself, you can get deeper into who you are, what you do in here and what is life all about. If you wish to talk to me about it, please comment down below also or send me a private message. I'm more than happy to show you some meditations as well as some mindfulness technique to be more aware on the Camino de Santiago, despite the religion that you have, despite the belief that you have, because we all are brothers, we all are one, and this is the prevalent idea that I have in my heart. So guys, this, I tried to make the justice for the subject like Camino de Santiago, I know which is impossible, and I know there's also one video just waiting to be done with all the clothes and a little bit of equipment that you will need for your Camino de Santiago but we have to wait for another video otherwise it will never over so if I see you around I'll give you a big big cuddle just to let you know buen camino peregrino